Hey guys, uh, this is just a little bit of a pre-production uh, note, so to speak. Um, so, uh, earlier in the week when I was uh, doing this particular video, uh, installing the, uh, the uh, pistons into the block, uh, I stopped the camera at one point and then I you know when to re-record and continue on from where I was where I was at and for some reason uh, I think I changed the memory card or something but uh, I ended up with a, a bunch of corrupted files so the bad news is is that the video you're about to watch is showing the process up to the point where I'm just installing the uh, the bearing cap um, I was about to install the uh, uh, about to install the new fasteners and uh, continue on and I lost uh, well I got 29 minutes of it and I lost 0.6 of a gigabyte so at that point it looks like I lost about another six or seven minutes God knows my movies are fucking long enough as it is so maybe it's a good thing but it didn't show the process of me talking down uh, the uh, Carrillo fasteners, which is kind of disappointing because I was hoping to, to keep that. Uh, maybe someone would have been interested in that or just for my own prosperity. So that's kind of a bitch. Um, and then I also lost two further videos after that using the same, uh, the same SD card. And like I said, I don't know what the problem is, but uh, everything on that SD card was corrupted. Nothing, uh, nothing would work. Just... Anyway, frustrating. I've tried everything. I've even taken the SD card to a computer expert to try and recover the files, and he had no luck either. So we also lost uh, what would have been video number nine, uh, the oil pan installation. And that was kind of neat because uh, it showed the special, uh, the special sealant that GM requires you to use. The oil pan itself does not use a a gasket, like a you know preformed gasket. Uh, they use a special sealant. So that would have uh, that would have been kind of cool. And we also lost, believe it or not. Oh, hang on, I'm not too sure here, actually. We may have lost the, uh, the head stud installation. And I think, I think that more had to do with um, thread prep and uh, the deck and deck preparation as well. Because I'm just looking at my notes here. It does say that... Uh, I've got a completed video, you know, this is, a lot of this stuff I'm kind of a week behind and I've been trying to take notes the best I can, but, you know, with work and everything else, it's just, it's so much work, you have no idea. Um, my notes say, video number nine, head studs, block and head prep, head install. So, I'm not too sure what I've got on there, <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see, uh, but... The sum of it is, is that uh, this video is cut short right after I uh, place the uh, the bearing caps in place, and uh, that'll be the end of the video. So, anyway, cheers, have a good night, have a drink, enjoy, and uh, we'll catch up with you on the next video. Okay guys, uh, as you can see we're making some good progress today. I've got uh, three of the pistons installed and uh, as per usual after uh, a little experience and playing around with the, uh, the first three I'm going to show you what I do on the fourth. So let's uh, get set up here. Uh, so first off Going to clean the, um, make sure the the bore is clean. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Is that zooming in? 
so zooming out yeah why does this camera sometimes it likes lets me zoom in sometimes it doesn't bizarre anyhow you can see the empty we're gonna empty hole here we need to fill this so what I do is um, once again I use my coffee filters just because there's absolutely no lint on them uh, I take the coffee filters and uh, put a little ATF on it now the beauty of ATF is uh, it uh, is very anti uh, anti corrosive and when I clean the bore with this you basically just keep going until everything looks nice and clean so you pull the coffee filter out if there's any uh, any remnants any dirt grime grease whatever these bores are really clean anyway I know that um, but you just keep on going here Get good scrub down give some nice lubrication to the surface and at the same time cleans her up real nice so what I do is do that take a look at it yeah there's nothing here at all these bores are super clean I mean I've cleaned them probably <laughs> I've probably cleaned them a half a dozen times take another new filter give her a once over again Get right down at the bottom here. Now this might be a little longer video than some would like, but too bad. Uh, there's a lot of steps here that need to be done. All basically having to do with uh, just making sure everything's spotless. Uh, so it might be a little longer than some will some would like. Yep, looking good. Okay, let's get rid of that. I'm gonna go and grab another handful of filters over here. Get these ready. Um, so just want to make sure I'm in frame here. Now, I used to be able to zoom back on this, and I don't understand why I can't. Zoom in, zoom out. Anyway, <laughs> who knows? Uh, I'm just going to rotate the engine over. I've got to get to the uh, crank journal for number four. So I'm just going to spin her over. And same thing here again. Oops. Um, so what I do with the journal here, I just want to make sure there's no, no contaminants on there at all. Uh, take another filter, spray a little on the journal, spray some on some on a coffee filter, and then just rotate this up. Get in here, scrub this nice. You don't want any lint anything at all uh, between the bearing and the journal you know microscopic lint that might be left over from these coffee filters is fine uh, but from a general shop rag or something forget about it and this is the difference between doing this yourself and getting some greasy chicken bum engine so-called engine builder that makes 10 bucks an hour to put these together and it's nice and clean once I've done that I'll give her a bit of a block compressed air spin her over get to the other side beautiful Oh, running out of room here, so I'm going to spin the spin the block back over. Oh, this engine stand is just a whack job. Anyway, there we go here. 
and just to be sure Good. Okay, so now we have a perfectly clean bore, perfectly clean uh, journal, uh, and now we can come back over to the uh, workbench here. Let's move the camera. And I'm really pissed off that I can't zoom back out on this because I'm way too tight here. Well, maybe not. I'll just use my uh, green towel as a as a reference. I'd actually like to get a little tighter in on that, but um, let's see. Like I say, might be a little longer video, but oh, hang on, listen, listen, shh, shh. everyone, quiet. Oh! <laughs> uh, still makes me laugh. Nothing funny as a fart. <laughs> Alright. So I think we're in frame. Let's double check. Yeah, good. Okay, so we've got uh, number four here. Rings, uh, as per the previous video, are in, ready to go. Um, I'm going to take the fasteners out. Like I say, everything here from, I'd like to say experience, but I've got no experience. So everything here that my inner, inner being and my karma um, is leading me to do is uh, cleanliness. Cleanliness is godliness. So. Now the, uh, the fasteners, as you can see, came pre-lubed, um, but I don't know what they were pre-lubed with. So I'm going to remove all of this material, which I've done on the previous three. Get them all nice and clean, get up under the, uh, especially up under the mating surface, because there's no washers on these dudes. And as you can see, they're 11 millimeter, uh, 12 point socket. Get these all nicely cleaned up. I should be still in frame. It's a thing that terrifies me because I'm not using the other camera, so I don't have a monitor to see what's going on here. But it's all good. So now we have two beautiful looking fasteners. Very good. Now, um, takes a little bit to pull the cap off of this guy. You kind of got to grab it and wiggle it. Oh, this one's really tight. Back and forth, back and forth. Here we go. And as you can see, my my dots are still there, indicating the orientation of the cap. Uh, okay, so this is probably overkill, but I do this anyway. Uh, give a spray there. Spray on the bottom of the cap. Uh, grab myself. Coffee filter, give her a clean. Make sure the mating surfaces are nice and clean. No, no goo. No anything. Metal to metal. Same thing on this dude. Get in the holes, clean up some of the uh, the previous uh, fast uh, fastener lubricant that was in there from the shipping. Clean that up. And then once again, machine shop, do this. Good luck. Okay, give her a nice little. This is the beauty of using uh, 
a, like a brake cleaner product. It just evaporates so quickly that uh, you're always left with a, a perfect surface, perfectly clean surface. So once that's done, uh, just go over it once more, make sure she's good, and then bearings. Uh, back side of the bearing, like I say, it's not really important. Um, just want to make sure there's nothing there. Typically, I'll, uh, well, not typically, but previously, I have give her a quick blast, let it sit for a second, let it sit. Good looking coffee filters here. Just quickly clean the back, clean the back. Blow it off. Okay, so bearings. Can't get this wrong. Uh, make sure I'm in shot here. Where am I? So I need to be in line about here. Okay. Um, pretty difficult to get this wrong. There's a tab on the bearing. These are genuine GM bearings, by the way. Do do do. Part number uh, uh, one two five nine one zero nine three. Set of four. Big end rod bearings. Okay, so this notch um, fits into this notch. Hopefully, I'm in. I keep saying that. Don't I? Hopefully, I'm in frame. Hopefully, I'm in frame. So you just kind of press that in. And you'll hear it click into place. The important thing is, is it depends how good your eyes are. I tend to use uh, where are my glasses? There we are. I tend to use feel more than anything, but you want to make sure that uh, this is flush on both sides. It'll probably um, fix itself during you know the compression once you install it, but at that time. It's nice to just get it where it needs to be. Same thing on the cap, get that prepared. Um, yeah, I'm in frame. Yeah. I'm going to stop saying that, it's worse than my ums and ahs, eh? I'm in frame, I'm in frame. Okay, cap's in, good. Feels good. Both sides, beautiful. Okay, so uh, once again, I want to now. This is important. Um, we want to clean both surfaces of the uh, of the bearing. Take a new coffee filter for this. Backwards and forwards, like so, and you'll see how nice that looks. Look at that baby. Beautiful. Like a baby's bottom. Not that I mean that a baby's bottom is beautiful, but uh, as smooth as a baby's bottom. Now if I was a certain administrator on a certain forum, that might mean something different altogether. Especially if they are oriental bottoms. But uh, we don't want to go there. That's no good. So once again, you see how nice that looks. Um, one last thing, I just give it a quick blow off. So, okay, now, uh, what's next? We need to lubricate the rings in um, in uh, preparation for putting the. What's going on here? Yeah. yeah, in preparation for putting the um, ring compressor on. I'm just freaking out here that I'm not going to be in shot because I can't see what the wreck is going on. So let me move the camera a little closer here. I know that if I'm 
between there. Okay. Uh, so once again, I'm using ATF. Um, and I just start on one side and start lubing her up. So, really hope this is on camera. <laughs> okay, just let that sit for a second, let it soak. Clean my hands up. Uh, now, ring compressor. Here she is here. Same deal. Um, I just put a little lube on the inside of the ring compressor and at the same time make sure that uh, she's nice and clean a little ATF again get in there good Whoop. yep looks good very nice okay this is the difficult part. Uh, I haven't found an easy way to do this, and the first uh, the first uh, bore that I did it was a was a hole to do. Hang on a second, I need a drink. But when we put this ring compressor on, we need to make sure the orientation of the rings is correct, as per the previous video. So. Uh, top ring, top compression ring uh, needs to be facing this way. Second compression ring towards the front of the engine. Yeah, top compression ring towards the rear front towards, uh, sorry, the uh, second compression ring towards the front, and just checking the um, oil rails, they're all looking good. So, once again, as I was saying, this is kind of a difficult part, because we need to put this guy, you almost need another set of hands, and as I've said before, I have no friends, which I kind of prefer. Uh, so how I found this is I just hold this like so. You see this on camera? Yeah. So this is sitting on top of the fleshy part of my hand. And then if I had another set of hands, they could hold this so it doesn't rotate as I clamp down on the system. So what I'm trying to do here is yeah, beautiful. So I know those rings haven't rotated. Okay, looks like we're good here, guys. Looks like we're really good. Okay. So now we want to take some assembly lube. Now I've been using two different types of assembly lube. Uh, one is uh, the one that I've been using. Oh, yeah. The one that I've been using previously is this uh, Lucas uh, Lucas Lucas stuff here, which has been working great. Uh, but it's more of a um, a filmy kind of deal. I wanted more of a a gelatin paste. Uh, that holds in place so I can get a nice nice bead on it for when I drop it into the uh, into the into the bore and on top of the journal so let's uh, hopefully you can see this yeah you know, let's do it down here so you can see uh, uh, just make a nice and this stuff's awesome made in the made in the US of A Okay, 
So let's put that off to the side. Like that. And uh, let's spin the camera around. Actually, let's get the block ready in the camera. Move this over here like so. And do this. Can't see anything. There we go. I wonder if I can get really close to this. Like this. I don't know why the zoom's not working on this piece of shit camera. Fucking thing. Oh, it's in 3D or some shit. Seven, oh no, that's 30 frames a second. Okay. Anywho. Alright, so here we go. Uh, remembering the orientation of the piston. Uh, that being the, uh, this is the worst when you have to keep walking behind the camera to see what you're filming. So the dot, lay dot, goes towards the front of the engine, like so. So we're going to drop the, uh, actually why don't I just move back a bit so you can see what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm going to drop it in like this. As you can see, that goo sits on there real nice. That's what I was looking for. Other than this semi, you know, kind of low viscosity stuff that just falls everywhere. So we want to put this in here. We want to watch out that we don't uh, hit the oil squirter. Make sure the pistons uh, orientated correctly. Um, I kind of like using a big hammer because if, like I said before, if you've got a hammer and it works fine, then a hammer of double the size is going to work twice as fine. Okay. So, I'm just going to put this off to the side here. Now, one of the things that's really important, and I'll take this uh, back down to Jaffra, my buddy, is making... Whoop, is making sure that the uh, ring compressor itself is mashed down and is flush with the top of the block otherwise you're going to have all sorts of bad days so you got to kind of feel around a little bit and you'll eventually find a point where feels good where it kind of kind of locks in place where you can hold it and it doesn't slide which is what I've got right now let me take my hammer and start mashing it down well actually it didn't feel too good let me try it again I'm just wondering if I've got it That's it, guys. She's in. Isn't that a thing of beauty? <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, and just so you know, if you want to save your um, uh, your ring compressor, don't just hit the switch here. Put your uh, put your Allen key in and let her out smoothly otherwise you'll break the, uh, the the compression springs okay we're not done yet let's get rid of the big hammer have a drink mmm that's looking good that went in real nice real nice okay so now uh, we need to spin the engine over because we need to get to the journals. So let me get over here. Let's spin this dude over. Okay. So we're still on number four here. 
This friggin' camera, I can't believe, why? Why is it not allowing me to zoom in? That's just shit. Anyway. Um, so what we want to do is get the journal up to the center of the... Uh, the crank. Uh, the... Hmm. Might be easier said than done because I need to rotate it. There we go. I got it this way. Okay. Oop. And then what I do is uh, the uh, end of the rod right now is sitting up, well, it's sitting up inside the uh, the block. I'm just going to orientate it. Oop. There we go. Um, and I'm going to push it back up, nicely up. So I don't score or damage the journal at all. And so it fits right onto there real nice, like so. Okay, so that worked good. Now, I've got no zoom here, so I'm going to try and get you guys a little closer. That's better. So as you can see, hopefully you can see. Now you can see the uh, the bottom end of the rod there. Um, so now we're going to take a rod cap with the uh, bearing already in place. Stick some more goo on here. Like so. Now we know because of my marks here, my four dots, um, and because I've been wheeling around the block uh, and ready to video this, I'm just going to check and make sure that I'm on the right. Yeah. I can see here, there's my four dots right there, so that's nice. It's always nice to confirm things like that. So my four dots are going to be orientated in this direction, like here. I'm going to drop the cap into there. And then from underneath, I'm going to take my big hammer again, hold the cap in place. Just punch up a little bit. Like so, because there are some dowels that hold these caps in place, which you may or may not have seen. Um, okay, so from there, it's probably not the best camera angle. 